It's um, 65 years old. Uh, we've gone from when I was involved from nearly being three teams nearly folding as a club and we've bounced on now and this year we're up to 24 teams and we just keep growing. People just keep coming to us and we, we don't turn anyone away and we just keep growing. My name's Bob Hinder, I'm the club secretary, uh, also coach on the teams now and I've been involved for 16 years now. Um, I've been secretary for about 13 of those years, so basically just doing the day-to-day -day running of all the teams now. My dad started the youth setup in the late 60s, early 70s. I was involved in some of the early years. I think there's a picture somewhere of the team that I played for. Yeah, yeah. That was back in, it must have been early 70s. I've then finished playing football and come back to the club as a coach, been involved with the committee. I feel really proud that my dad did so much and got the club so far to what it is now. And the, the likes of Bob and the committee have took it to another level. It's the catchment area is basically anywhere within Salford they can go up to as far as Walton because it's classed within Salford. Uh, we've got them from the local, from down Duxy area, around, from Earlands of the Eye, uh, from Oddswell, um, Swinton, everywhere from all these areas. And tonight is one of the nights for the training sessions, and there'll probably be in excess tonight of maybe 100 or more children down there tonight playing football. Other than the fact that there's a road called Bar Hill Avenue with three houses on just outside, but it's not an actual area. There was a post office, was called Bar Hill Post Office on the height, but as of where the name come from, I don't know. We've got over 400 members. That's 400 children, kids playing active football on a Saturday or stroke Sunday. What else would they be doing? So without us and the other clubs. You know, there's a lot of kids that are just walking down the streets bored or sat in front of a television. I think just to see kids enjoy themselves and not only just learn how to play football, but social skills as well. Kids who aren't quite as good as at football can still learn how to behave with other team players and, and get involved with the club. I'm on Matty and just this training goes on like three nights a week and it's all different ages from lower age to open age really. Um, there's training like from um, starts at like six and it goes through all the way to the night, it's probably about nine. And we've had a couple of players that have come down over the years that haven't been good to start off but the confidence built up and all that and they've got better and better. I'm just proud of like how my granddad just made this club, well didn't make it but thought, like founded the club and all that and just to have all the family running through it, it's just proud. There's pictures of going back to the 1949-50 season and with one of the founder members, Alan Chesters, who eventually went on to run, start up this youth, what is now known as Bardo JFC. He started it in the late 60s, early 70s and from there it's just progressed into one team, two teams and it's just grown bigger and bigger. Alan Chesters. He actually got awarded an MBE off the Queen. 17th of October 1996 for his work to football in this Sofa community. This was one of the very first teams that he started. Alan's there with Mike Kennedy who went on to play for the Republic of Ireland. Gary Buckley who was at Manchester City. Who actually got a members card from the 1947-48 season detailing presidents and secretaries, brief history of the club as it was then. 
which is, you know, we found this was just a great find. And there's not many clubs who can say they've got a history like we've got here. On August the 8th, we've got, a, obviously, we're going to have a, a fun day here, which incorporates the 65th anniversary, where we're having all activities for, for, the, kit, for the children, anyone to come from within the area, old players, etc., to come and see the new, the new facilities that haven't probably seen us for a, you know, for a few years, and then everyone to look at the old memorabilia, which will all be on display. I started just when I was young, I started training with like, the older ones when I was about, oh, about five or something. And then I started its proper team when I was about six. One week maybe we'll do fitness and next week we'll do like like passing and stuff. One week we'll do shooting. You know, it changes every week so you're getting the best of everything. This was the headquarters, it was probably mid mid seventies, right through to the nineties. And it was just at the time, it was just one big changing room where one big room, we used to have pool table, table tennis table, but unfortunately it was vandalised and burnt down. It's now sold for council use for the adults. It is a big building, but it was a freezing cold building. We were constantly raising money just to keep the updates of it. And, you know, it was hard work, it was always damp and cold. This is the plan that by a company called the Land Clinic put forward to us and to the council that would turn what we've got here into four full-size pitches, three mini soccer pitches, a clubhouse and an indoor, chain, uh, indoor training facility for winter. At the, cost, at the moment it costs around about four to five thousand pounds in winter to train the kids. So it's partly funded by them and fundraising that we do. Unfortunately, the council threw up a load of red tape at us and at the moment that has been pushed back. Hopefully in the next few years we can maybe go ahead with that. This building we're in now was built some five, six years ago. Uh, the council came to us and asked us if we would move from the original building, which was a lot bigger. Uh, we, we jumped at the chance got a brand new building purpose built for us mm -hmm. it's the one of the first girls teams that we actually got going who are now under 14s Eddie Baz? Under 14s now yeah. Last year's under 14s and they, they got on, got, went on to win the league and cup mm -hmm. and there's their splitting playing in a tournament. The club nearly folded quite a few years back when I first got involved. I took it as a personal crusade and everyone calls me Mr. Mr. Barrel if you like. When I see that down there, it's not better. Nothing better. You know, it's not all about playing for a team and you have to be the best player. Just come down and train if that's what they want to do. Just get enjoyment and get them off the streets. <laughs> 